Excellent. So welcome again to this webinar, Tips and Tools to Go Remote. Um, my name is Bruno. I'm the founder of Kumquat Consult, which is a facilitation company. We help uh, our clients and beyond meet and get the great outcomes they want when they meet. Um, I'm based in Brussels and let me introduce my colleague Marie. Marie, do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, hi everyone, my name is Marie and I joined Kumquat about two months ago now. Yes, <laughs> it's been <laughs> it's been two months now. I'm joining uh, Bruno to facilitate meetings and gatherings uh, for, uh, for Kumquat clients and as of late helping organizations run online uh, online meetings and online work and helping them achieve great, uh, great outcomes. So very nice great. to meet you all. All right, some known faces as well. Thanks, Marie. Uh, so this is the second such webinar. We've put one on last week, which had uh, over 50 people attend. And our goal here is to help people work remotely in those very uncertain COVID-19 times. Um, we want to start with a quick poll. Which, okay, thanks very much. That's very insightful and useful for us to know. Now, um, working online or remotely, uh, we wanted to boil this down to three very simple steps for everyone. If you're not used to this, you need simple, you need uh, easily actionable. To work online or remotely, you need to decide, design, and organize. I'll go into, uh, Marie and I will go into uh, each of them uh, in greater depth now. So decide before working online or remotely, you need to decide whether you should. Indeed, should we work remotely on this? Not all work is good for remote. Um, for example, simple discussions, yes. Organizing an existing project, yes. Um, checking in regularly with your team, yes. Um, sharing a large amount of information only one way, unilaterally, yes, definitely. Uh, but you should be more careful about working online with some other goals. For example, having a complex conversation or a conversation that's likely to um, lead to tensions. Best to avoid this. Creating a new project from scratch. Best to avoid this, very complex. Discussing HR issues, very complex, potential tensions, best to avoid. Um, similarly, uh, generally speaking, anything that's um, complex, uh, deeply personal, uh, likely to involve feelings or deep feelings, we recommend that you avoid working online. Uh, maybe even a phone call may be better uh, in these times of uh, limited meetings, but try to be mindful of what you want to uh, do online with your colleagues or with, um, with your teams. Not everything is fit for that. So then comes the next question, what's our goal? What do we actually want to achieve? And in terms of goal, we want to put five goals to you. If your online work is going to fit into one of them, then great, go ahead. You meet online or you work online to discuss topics, very simply. You work online to ideate, brainstorm, generate new ideas. You work online to organize new or existing projects. You work online to edit or review documents. And you work online to poll or to decide. These five goals are the five, say, families of what you are likely to be able to achieve online. If it falls in another category, for example, uh, building community or increasing team cohesion, online is not going to be the best way forward. It doesn't mean it's a no-go, it doesn't mean it's forbidden, but we recommend that if you work online, it's to do one of these five things. And the last question you need to ask yourself when you need to decide whether to work online is, what will we concretely have at the end? You need to be able to picture that. If you're not able to picture it, then your online work, whether it is a meeting or a review session or uh, organizing a project online, is just not going to be clear to your participants. So what will, go, what will we concretely have at the end? Well, for this webinar, which is a piece of online work, what we will concretely have at the end is that participants will be more aware of how to organize uh, their online work. It's as simple as that. Uh, for uh, a team discussion, what will we concretely have at the end? An overview of what everyone is working on or has worked on this week. Or 
for uh, a project uh, management meeting, what will we concretely have at the end? Tangible progress on a number of key tasks. But if you don't take the time to formulate that to yourself at the beginning, you can't expect your participants to have a clear idea of what you'll be doing, and you can't expect your online meeting or work to be clear. So that's it for the first part, decide. And now I'm happy to hand over to Marie for uh, the second part, which is design. Sure, thank you. So many things will come into your mind in order to design good uh, remote work. We decided to boil it down to two key elements, which is picking the right tools and picking the right people to work with. So in terms of picking the right tools, you will be receiving a handout at the end of this uh, session via, via the emails you have provided to us that will, allow us that will allow you to see different kind of tools we recommend. But indeed, not all tools are suited for all purposes. So for example, maybe if we, if we look at the next slide, we picked three out of the five goals that Bruno has outlined. In order to discuss, we would recommend, for example, using one of these uh, online video conferencing tools like Zoom, like BlueJeans, like Whereby, um, Threads, and, and Lumio. In order to ideate or brainstorm, we would recommend using the Google suite of apps or even Dropbox. Coda is another um, tool, a mural and whiteboard allow you to visualize elements uh, virtually and to collaborate on a sort of a virtual whiteboard together. And then to organize, we would recommend apps of the Google Suite again, but also well-known household names of project management tools like Basecamp, like Trello, uh, Asana, and again, Mural can be used to organize ideas. So not all tools will be suited for all purposes. What we would recommend is to if you're going to use one type of, um, of tool for a discussion, for example, Zoom, then maybe stick to the same tool uh, all the time. Avoiding uh, having people go you know, from Box to Dropbox to, to Google for documents. So let's try and make sure that the teams are regularly using the same tool so that they can become familiar with them and so that it, it feels less you know, spread out all across all different kinds of tools. So a combination of tools might be needed. Uh, for example, here we have a Zoom call, but then after this, you will receive an email with a link to uh, Google Documents. So oftentimes you will find that some tools will be combined together. You will not find everything in, one, um, in only one app. We, in the document we will share with you afterwards, we also have highlighted which, uh, okay, which applications have what we consider to be a good free version, which is that you can get the most of it from the free version already uh, as it is now. So this is what we, uh, we can recommend. There's many others, and I'm sure you may already be using others in your own organizations, in which case, if they serve the purpose you need, then you can stick to those. And then for the next slide, picking the right people. So here again, uh, there is a sort of sweet spot in terms of how many people would need to be involved in your remote work, in your discussions, in a meeting to decide uh, on something. We consider that the sweet spot is between three and eight people. Um, so for those of you who are familiar with the law of diminishing returns, the idea is that for every additional person after eight, the additional viewpoint that is brought to the table is actually also linked to a decrease in efficiency and productivity for the team in general. So you may want to be to look at who you are bringing to the table. Are these people who need to be able to decide or to operationalize uh, a decision or um, a concept together? Or are these people who only need to be kept up to date? about something, in which case you may not need to involve them in the remote work, but you may want to keep them informed about the outcome of a decision afterwards or to have a handout or um, a summary of a decision sent to them, but not have them around the table at that time. So this is what we recommend in terms of choosing the, the right people. And again, you know, then use your, your best judgment as to what makes, what makes this uh, most efficient. The idea here is to protect the productivity of your online work and to make sure that it's, uh, it's enjoyable online work for, for everyone as much as possible. 
Great. Thank you, Marie. So that's it for design. We've covered decide earlier. And what's the third and last step to um, do your work online or remotely? It is to organize. Once you've decided whether to do some online work, once you've designed um, in which way you're going to do it, you need to organize it. And here we want to leave three pieces of advice with you. The first one is to communicate clearly. Communicating clearly means sticking to the bare minimum when you communicate with the people you want to involve. So what is it? Is it an online review session? Is it a Zoom meeting or, or a virtual meeting? Um, is it um, voting on an issue on threats.com? What is it for? What is the outcome that you are going to work towards? So for example, the outcome of this webinar is increase people's knowledge of online tips and tools. Who is going to be involved? This is usually pretty self-explanatory. If you send an invitation email, it's going to be the people in, uh, in the recipient's field. When is it? Pretty straightforward. Don't uh, forget the little time zone issue um, if you are going to work with people across different time zones. This means communicating in everyone's time zone and also uh, making sure that you organize your online work in uh, time zones that are in, in times that are friendly for everyone, especially if you're um, across, for example, both Asia and the American continent. And finally, where, which URL should people connect to uh, at the given time? Here's an example. Uh, this is an example of, a, of an email uh, template uh, to confirm an activity on a given date. And this gives me the opportunity to present the list of templates that we will bring to you uh, afterwards, uh, after this um, uh, webinar is over. And I'm going to share another part of my screen. It's going to be this one. We've collated four templates uh, for your emails. One is to select a date for an online activity. Another one is for you to confirm a date or invite people to your online activity. Another one is to remind participants of your upcoming activity. And the final one is to follow up your online activity. And you'll see that for each template, we have defined a blank template for you to add your information, as well as an example that, uh, for what this might look like concretely. You'll receive this, um, uh, it's on Google Docs. You can make a copy for yourself and copy paste to your liking. Then going back to the presentation. In addition to communicating clearly, you need to time it right. Timing it right means paying attention to three aspects. The request, the deadline, and the duration. And making sure that these um, are optimal is a way for you to increase the chance that people will turn up, that your online work will be effective and efficient. The request, send a request during business hours, not on Fridays. This is not when people's attention is at its highest. Um, and early, don't send a request just before close of business in general, unless you, uh, of course, it's a, it's a low importance request. But here, we're starting from the uh, presumption that you want people to pay attention to your online activity. So um, the deadline, send your request and give a deadline between two and 10 days. Under two days is possible, but only if your work is genuinely urgent, because under two days you're making a, a slightly more demanding request on your participants. Above, two day, above 10 days, sorry, and do this only if it requires substantial effort or thinking or production from your participants. But apart from these two cases, time your deadline between two and 10 days or announce your online activity between two and 10 days as a rule of thumb. And finally, for the duration, 30 to 50 minutes is the best duration for online meetings, online activities. Why 50 and not 60? Simply because if everyone uh, meets 60 minutes after 60 minutes on the hour, some people will have to spend their entire mornings or afternoons or even days online without a break. When you time your online activity with 50 minutes, you give people 10 minutes of a break afterwards.
And really you can go above that, but we strongly recommend capping uh, any duration at 90 minutes. That's an hour and a half. Because after 90 minutes uh, in front of a screen, you just need to uh, get a break, you need to stretch, you need to get a drink. Um, and um, above 90 minutes, you'll just lose people's uh, attention very severely. So never go above that. That's our recommendation for timing it right. And the third and last uh, piece of advice we want to give you when it comes to organizing your online work is to plan the follow-up. Planning the follow-up is very much as simple as planning to list who, what, and when, or by when. You should have this list handy, or you should nominate, a, a nominate someone or, or ask for a volunteer to be the follow-up master of your online meeting. Whenever someone commits to something or says, we should, or we have to, or let's, these are keywords, and the follow-up master should write down who should do what and when or by when. And this really is the only thing you need for effective follow-up. If you focus on these three, um, if you do a list or a table of these three, you'll have everything you need. In addition to that, we also want to advise you to share a summary of the important points, of salient points only, not a novel. We don't want to receive um, uh, verbatim reports from every meeting. You're actually doing a disservice to, to those who didn't participate or even to those who participated because you're hiding the key information in a sea of words. And uh, we all know that uh, today, if anything, there is too much information out there. So keep it short. A summary is much better than uh, the verbatim report. So that's it. In a nutshell, we wanted to tell you to organize your work. You needed to decide whether and how to work online. You need to design um, your online work to determine uh, which tools you're going to use. Um, and then finally, you need to organize it to bring your people in. Uh, we've also touched upon the fact that we'll uh, send you um, a PDF to summarize all these points, um, as well as those uh, email templates on Google Docs. In a second, I'm going to open up the floor for questions. Um, if you have a specific situation you need advice on, so you can start typing that up in the chat right now. Uh, but before we do that, uh, there's one last piece of uh, advice we wanted to give you, and it is to remember to be kind to yourself in these very strange times. We all live under added pressure, added stress. Um, it, you know, living uh, inside confined is not natural to anyone. So this means that you're going to have to adjust your expectations because especially now, but that's true all the time, you are going to be less productive at home than you are at work. It's natural, it's normal. So don't expect to be putting in eight hours of work per day. That's just not going to happen. Additionally, a lot of us will have dependents at home younger dependents, older dependents, spouses. It's important to be there for them. It's important to let ourselves be um, taken away from the screen by them. Um, in general, it's part of uh, staying sane. And finally, whether you have dependents at home or not, remember to take a break from the tech. Uh, a screen is not everything. In fact, a screen can be very uh, damaging if that's all you do all day. So remember to get up, remember to stretch, Remember to breathe, remember to drink, uh, remember to look outside and breathe outside the window. Um, and all of this will make for better uh, online work. Uh, 